All right, so we can probably go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining. Uh, my voice is absolutely shot. We've announced our Dev Innovate program. It's been incredibly well received from the folks over at the other side. Uh, and it was my chance to come over and talk to all of you. So thank you very much for making the time. Uh, it's a pretty important new announcement that Cisco is making. This is a, a launch of a beta program. We're taking people that are interested in participating in the beta, and then we'll launch the formal event a little bit later on. But we are looking for people to participate in the beta. Uh, the genesis of this, of this program is to solve one fundamental problem, which is things are innovating so quickly. You guys as the developer shops are doing amazing work. And the problem that we're seeing repeated over and over and over is people that have the capacity to innovate are showing executives or business leaders what they're capable of doing. They're getting sponsorship to do it. And then they go to the engineering and the ops side of these organizations, and there's a huge disconnect between the way innovations are built and the way that a lot of these innovations gets launched inside of a network or inside of a large-scale organization. Uh, and we're in a unique position to solve that. What we're basically doing in this program, and I'll give you the details, is we're taking the tools that the production groups use and making them available in a development kit and a development environment to be built on by the people that can really innovate. And I have many, many examples of this. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about the viral platform that we've made available. How many of you have heard of viral? So we've taken all of our routers and all the operating systems and all the application space and we've ported them to run in virtual machines. And they're the real routing code. And what that allows us to do is take an entire network and load it, those real configs, into those real routers and run an emulated environment of that person's network. Why this becomes important is if you're writing an application, maybe an, an analytic application or something that's a real-time application, you assume as a developer that there's no latency and that there's endless bandwidth and then your one router hop away from your end user. And the reality is there's huge problems in that discussion. Running viral in your development platform, the network engineering side can load that real network inside of your development environment, only runs one of the computers there. And you can actually begin to do evaluations of your code running against the actual network. You can evaluate latency. You can evaluate best placement for the application. You can evaluate private public cloud performance. You can evaluate distributed applications. Then they can come and make modifications in a test scenario to evaluate alternate routing paths. Increase your bandwidth, increase your link capacity, reduce your latency, be able to identify where your ideal centers are, all before you actually go into production. So it extends this concept of creating the innovation that everybody's craving, this competitive differentiation. And we want to take that conversation that usually take months, sometimes more than a year, and we want to compress it into a series of development events that can be done over a rapid, agile period of time. So that's the genesis for the program, is we really want to help people that have the capacity to innovate with a platform that's very robust, uses the entire Cisco portfolio. And what I gave you around viral was just one example. The other example would be, as you've seen some of the things that we've been discussing at the show, so much of Cisco's portfolio has been virtualized. Our firewalls, our policy agents, we're using controllers all over the place to allow you to do programmatic access into the network side. And the challenge that we've historically had is somebody wants to work with us with this broad portfolio, and it ends up being a very large set of equipment and a very large cost, and it's very hard to do except in large organizations. What we've done now is we've created a very small third of a rack footprint. I think our marketing branding is half rack of awesome or something, which is pretty nice, but it's actually smaller than that. And on this third of a rack, it's in our entire portfolio. So if you want to work with our controllers, if you want to work with our virtual functions, whether those be firewall agents, if you want to work with an open daylight open source controller, if you want to work with our collaboration tool set, if you want to work with our mobile core technology, all of those software functions and the development environments are available on this platform. So that's the Dev Innovate platform. Make this available to you guys and maybe a rapid environment to be able to work across our portfolio. It's a single orderable SKU. So with one ordering event, you get a whole fairly broad function of equipment. You get access from a development licensing standpoint to our entire portfolio, and you only do it for a year. If you want to do it for another year, it's a subscription basis and you can sign up for another year. If you don't want to because you're done with the project or you've shifted your direction, you don't have this big rack of equipment and a lot of products in place that you didn't need. So it's really targeted to those agile teams working across portfolio. And the last thing is every year we will refresh the technology footprint. One of the challenges is a lot of development groups, they may work with 
whatever's available. They may work with whatever they can afford, and often those don't get refreshed as quick as a lot of the engineering groups are evaluating. We want to make sure you're always working with the latest and greatest. So if you're familiar with some of our hardware platforms, we have a compute platform. If we have new advancements in that space, you'll get it with a new subscription. So that's the idea behind it. Um, we've talked to a number of beta customers and our alpha pilot about it. It's been very, very well received. One of the goals we also want to create is the ability to interconnect these common development environments throughout your organization or throughout your partner relationships so that you're working with a development group that has a competency in one area and you have a competency in another area. You can actually do dynamic workload placement and you can connect these two together, what I call an innovation fabric, but in effect, allow disparate groups of development to work very productively across a common platform and interconnect between these systems. So we've had examples of people that are working with virtualized applications wanting to interconnect with a virtual mobile core. That'd be very, very hard to do today. You'd have some simulation tools. We can actually take the production core uh, set of our uh, mobile network, load it within the innovation environment in one location, interconnect to the group that's doing application development, emulate our entire routed network between the two. And we're doing this in five or six compute nodes with high virtualization. So it's a very, very small footprint. And the level of confidence that it gives you and understanding how your application behaves in these systems is very high. More importantly, when you do something that's remarkable from an end user or business standpoint, and you go work with the engineering groups responsible for launching your service, a lot of those people understand Cisco very, very well. And when you say, I've done this with OpenStack, but I've also done it with your cloud services rather the CSR1KV, that group knows that you've used a routing core that actually integrates into their system. So it reduces that whole conversation about how to adapt it into their environment to just a check mark. That yes, you've been working with that environment, you have the enhanced functions. I'll go through a couple slides. That's it in a nutshell, and I have some use cases and examples. But before I do that, any questions uh, that you guys would like me to drill into in the conversation? All right. Uh, so really we're at this point right now, we're creating this beta that allows you guys to work with us in a new joint innovation model. It's really a superset of what you see here at DevNet. DevNet's really structured to create individual relationships with products and developers through a common relationship, which is DevNet. As you start working with three or four or five elements within that portfolio, this is a more premium way to start working with us. It does have the production tools that so we give you the platform, it ships on site, it comes with an installer that allows you to access all the portfolio that we've got available locally. We have a tool chain involved that allows it to migrate into the cloud if you want to start doing uh, partitioning for development in the cloud. <laughs> and then we're going to move into these other areas. One of the things that we really want to enable is a marketplace. If you have a lot of innovators working on these applications and you now want to start making those applications available across verticals, across other business segments, that's a good thing for everybody. So what you'll see here and the things that we deliver are actually available across the entire portfolio vertical set that Cisco sells to. So enterprises, governments, municipalities, higher education, service providers, tier one, tier two, it's the exact same platform for all of them. So even though one group may target around a certain application environment, we want to have that common development space. So if you've worked in one, you're working with a bank, you go into a service provider, it should be a consistent development environment, you should be able to hit the ground running, knowing what's available, being able to make use of it. And then if you're working in an environment that crosses verticals, maybe you're working with a distributor or an integrator, or you're working with some service provider that services these other verticals, you now can start having joint relationships where maybe that particular vertical, that bank or that education group is doing development, and you can dynamically interconnect that into your development environment that you've built around whichever vertical you're coming from. So our goal is really to affect this at a marketplace level make it easier for everybody to innovate, and also gives us a target platform so that all the things that you see here, if you've been to the other location, all the things that you see over there, they all work in this space. So I work with development groups in Cisco, they come in and they validate the application segment working here so that you don't have to. Uh, this is just one of the more uh, chart slides. When you get into working with all this detail, we've got this very robust SDN and virtualization portfolio that we're launching, hundreds and hundreds of use cases, dozens if not hundreds of applications will be running in that environment, and we need a target platform to be able to work with all those. And then you get into some of the open stuff. If you haven't heard of the Evolve Services platform or Mozart, we have it available over the show to see. It's an entire orchestration platform for network function virtualization. It allows you to create service chains, 
We're also going to create different use cases. And with just clicks and buttons with the portal code that we give you, you can drive those through the entire network. So there's a lot of advanced functionality from that perspective. Uh, that's fairly robust because there's a lot of agents that we're going to add in that. There's a lot of third-party agents that you guys want to have that. That runs on the target platform. It runs this dedicated environment where you use the CPUs. We actually have it running as nested VMs as well. So you can get a more single vault footprint development mode also. And then you get into things that are open, open daylight, open stack, and all those agents. Those all come inside of it as well. Uh, if you have a build or an environment that's not what we support, you just wipe out what we provide and you put your own on it. It's really there to be able to give you that platform to develop on. So we're not limiting it in any way. We're just giving it something that's easy to access the portfolio and then you can choose where you want to go. So that's just some of the visual example. This is an example of the rack that goes on site. Uh, kind of cut it in half to reduce it because we have a top of rack topology configuration. But in effect, it's a third of a rack. You have six compute nodes. You have a core router. For those that know the platform, CSR 9001. It's our next gen core router. It's a small profile that fits inside. Uh, and the Nexus 5672, which is our new fabric switch. It's got 72 ports fully configured with SFPs. So the other option you have here is there's tremendous uh, additional capacity. If you want to interconnect your development organization, this can affect be the backbone of your development group. Anything that you guys want to do, nothing's explicit. It's all just available for you guys to make use of. Uh, these are just some of the high level architectures and uh, verticals that are being demonstrated over there at the show. Uh, we have this functionality in these application spaces running inside of this innovation platform. So if you want to talk about analytics, got a lot of virtualization for NFE, our cloud tool set, all the things that you see up here are going to be residing in it. Uh, actually, Cisco's using this as a target platform. You go into our innovation centers, it's going to be based on that same development kit. Uh, we have a lot of rapid prototyping centers, a lot of showcase centers. They have that same need. How do I bring in third parties to do these kind of very quick moving development programs and so they're using it as well. So you can actually walk into one of our spaces where we do a lot of co-working space, take the skills that you have in your own environment and work there. So again, we're just trying to make a common development environment for everybody across the portfolio. Uh, this is the highlight of it. I've hit it kind of to death. There's a platform, the software and solutions, but one thing that is unique is the way we're going to manage the community. Uh, one of the things we hear from development groups is, you know, Cisco, give me your SDK and get out of the way. I don't really need people talking to me all the time. I understand how to do it. If you give me the tools, I can be effective. So the bulk of the way we're going to interact with the people in this program is through a community. It'll be a community hosted within our innovation portal through DevNet. Uh, and we're going to have all of our TMEs, the technical marketing engineers, development engineering, moderating that. And so as you need answers, you want to interact with us, rather than having to go through a very explicit chain, you can just post out there for the kinds of information you want. There's an open branch of that community, so those of you that want to interact with each other, if you create different modules or scripts or looking for sample code, we want to enable that. And then there will be a way to poke through this more of an innovation place within GitHub as well. So if those of you want a public uh, domain model, we have that as well. So generally, we just want to give you guys the tools the way that you're comfortable working and be able to give an environment where we can moderate in a way that doesn't disrupt your work but allows us to give you the support that you're going to want. Uh, the steps to get involved, we want to make it very, very easy. If you go to this website, tripedup.dev-innovate.com, there's a quick beta form if you want to learn more details about the program, pricing, availability, detail, footprint, schedule for we're going to make the code available. More than happy to spend some time with any of you one-on-one. -on -one. So all you have to do is go to the website, apply for the beta form, we'll follow up with you. Guys, any questions before I shut down? That was all I have for you all today. I appreciate bringing the time uh, to spend. Can somebody get him a microphone? Is there anybody? Uh, uh, in the back. Hello. Perfect. It's working. Huh? Thanks. So, um, thanks for the wealth of information. I just wanted to ask you one question, and it's how are you planning to make this available to smaller startup-like organizations that are yeah. really fast? I can see what we can do with DevNets, but shops, they have yeah. 10 developers, 15 developers. They're not part of a big organization, yeah. but can move fast. Yeah. Uh, so, this is the prototype to understand how to service that segment. The tool chain that we're using to enable the sandboxing and the way that we spin up the instantiations of the code development environments is the same tool chain that's being used in the DevNet sandboxing. I don't know if you guys 
have seen it, but DevNet within the individual development relationships does have a sandboxing environment. We will use that same tool chain. And so what we expect is as we learn what is needed in a localized development from these larger groups, we'll be able to create the containers and be able to set the tool chains up that they become available for anybody within DevNet. It will take us a year to figure that out. There's just a lot of engineering associated with it. But what I would expect is 18 months from now, there's no hardware component. It's all cloud-based with rare exceptions. But between now and then, what we didn't want to do is miss the opportunity to work with the development groups. So I would say it's going to take a little while. We have some initial launches. There's the DevNet sandboxing, where if you can go look and see today, that will work. If you want to get some of the more advanced tools that aren't in there today, our program will be working through that in a localized environment and making it available. Uh, and frankly, I think we're going to very soon launch a mini pod which will be a lower cost profile, something maybe appropriate even to a startup um, that has a much smaller footprint with the same functionality. Virtualize the router, virtualize the switch through the fabric interconnect, reduce the CPU footprint, and the only difference is you'll be limited to those things that run in nested VMs rather than things that have explicit hardware requirements. So today, it's a fairly large footprint, probably not fit for a small startup. Uh, probably within three to four months, I'll have a mini pod that those of you that are capitalized in a way to go secure a very small footprint can do. And then along the way, we're going to use these tool chains to make them available for DevNet. So really, DevNet is a great vehicle. In a year from now, we'll have a more robust innovation model where you can participate strictly through that environment. So one more question. Would you suggest that we sign up for the program and be involved with the beta and stare on a lookout or, or not at this moment? I absolutely would. I, you absolutely sign up. Because the other thing is, a lot of the groups that are signing up, they don't have the development capacity they need and they're looking for partners that they can contract to and work with in these constructive relationships to bring them in. And so you can either come in that fashion or we can just keep you abreast. We're going to send out monthly updates of the status of what's available also. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then one other thing I should mention is the same tool chain that we use for the development environment, we have the ability to launch that tool chain into public and private clouds. And so one of the things we want to make available to the program that we're not committing to but is our goal is to be able to take a development platform that has these benefits that we work through, right? It's based on a real emulated production network. It's using real router code, real IPv6 security profiles. We want to be able to use a tool set that will allow you to launch that into a, a friendly trial in some of the private and public cloud agents using that same tool set. So what we envision is you can develop, you have a high degree of confidence that that development is production ready because we've given you those tools, and then you can launch it in a 300, 500, 5,000, 10,000 user trial in a public cloud in a more elastic mode, and evaluate how that works in more of a production mode. Rather than making these all explicit steps in this waterfall model, we have the ability where we are in Cisco with our tool sets and technologies to really make this an agile launch all the way up to a five and 10,000 user trial in a private cloud. And then at that point, what's naturally going to happen is people are going to want buying power. They're going to want to reevaluate standardization and scale. And they'll come in to try to reevaluate how it gets done. But you can get all the way up to that user trial space and friendlies using the production tools and they just dramatically cut that. So in that case, I want to also offer, we're going to see some of these tool sets being made available in our private public cloud set. And there's huge efficiency people don't realize, right? In your space, in most spaces, people just go on Amazon. But as you write unique applications that have unique profiles, a good example is we can do 40 gig line rate through one of our compute blades across the fabric. There is no 40 gig line rate generic compute in the cloud. If we can create that container definition, and you know that that's available, and you know a cloud has that functionality, we can expose it as a container in an API or through a controller, and now you can author applications that are very I.O. intensive, that don't require you to use 10 and 12 and 20 compute nodes that have a very high overall cost. You're paying for that bandwidth. If you know the profile, you know it's that kind of intensive relationship, build it in the development environment, launch it in the API in that container in a private cloud, and then get tremendous efficiencies. There's no way to do that today, and we want to be able to facilitate. So again, you might find interesting things in that space. Went a little further than you asked, but I hope that helps. Definitely sign up for the beta. Any other questions about this? All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'll be available over at the uh, table talk. If you guys want to go to the one-on-one, -on -one, happy to do so. And please come over to the World Solutions. We have all innovation booth. We'll take you through all the different demos. I didn't show you. We have 25 different applications running in this space, all with development environments. And they all actually interact in pretty interesting ways. So if you want to see what's possible, where it's going, we're happy to spend that time. And uh, we hope this program makes it easy for you guys to innovate with us. Thank you.